Okay. So the, um, the primary reason I wanted to call a meeting is because of the fact that I've been invited to participate uh, with another team, whether formally or informally. Um, I have interest in it. And uh, the interesting thing is um, Jay Taylor, who was the person who contacted me about this, um, the team name is called Fractally in Orbit. And what it has to do with is, you know, I connected with Jay over his uh, decentralized internet, HandyCon stuff. And then he uh, gave me a phone call and explained to me um, the Fractally in Orbit concept um, and just pieces of it in that basically there's a sovereign sky was, is part of this thing. And there's a white paper that Stan Larimer actually had produced that needs polishing up. And so it's a whole, it's a whole kind of subject matter of interest of mine that is all new to me and that I'm absolutely excited about because it's so forward thinking and cutting edge. Um, but there's no way in hell that I'm going to abandon this team. You know, if I, I don't want to, uh, what we started here, Mark, and I appreciate, and the reason I joined was because I, I, I appreciated your enthusiasm to get something going. I wasn't ever going to start a team. And when I realized that there's some value I can play with the fact that I have access to the software and I have a you know good researching kind of mind, you know, I was going with it. Um, so what happens is, is that Samara turns out, who is one of the few female uh, participants of Fractally, um, has an interesting connection with this group because she is in the presently partnered with someone who is in the satellite streaming industry and who has access to satellite and to Musk because they they have a lot of partners that have been doing this for some time. And um, it was at that point where I was trying to coordinate something with getting Samara back involved with Fractally and in dialogue with this other group. So, you know, their people could get a proposal together and sort of try to court Starlink or whatever. And it was at that point that I started getting feedback from Samara over Fractally and her feelings and, and whatnot. And, uh, and I also remembered the large consensus of men who said, we need women in a fractally meeting, right? When, am I not mistaken? And so yeah. now here's, here's a woman who wrote a Pomelo pitch, who was ready all gung-ho to promote fractally or EOS or whatever, along with this, you know, what she's working on and in involving, you know, native indigenous wisdom and traditions. But she has a whole nother concept of how fractal democracy or you know works in the indigenous tradition which she feels is unrespected and you know she gets in these meetings and they're a bunch of white men and you know and uh and and just a lot of uh kind of um i guess what you would call cultural baggage whether that's real or perceived it's something that's impeding her from wanting to have any participation and she also clearly stated she's like i'm not interested in and testing something out and being a guinea pig. I want something that works. And, you know, like, let me know when it's ready is the kind of attitude she had. And the big hurdle for her, uh, which prevented her from formally participation, participation is Hive. That she thought she had a Hive account, but was, she got confused with actually another account that she had. And so she couldn't post. And so, you know, whatever. So I talked to her for some time. Um, the fractally in orbit meeting is not a standard fractally meeting. It's like a team formation meeting. I don't even know if it's even a team yet, but uh, because of the fact of the satellite kind of uh, resource of access to players in the industry, and because of Samara's sort of latent interest in participation, I, uh, I called her and basically got her and getting her to attend this meeting, which Jay is very happy about. Jay wants me to attend this meeting. Then I'm like, hey, Jay, if anyone else wants to attend this meeting, you know, and I can find other people of interest, is that okay? And it, uh, as far as I know, that's fine. Uh, strangely enough, one of the other people that uh, he is interested in uh, having uh, some participation or interest is Shaq Cruz. And I think the reason for that is because uh, Jay and Stan and Shaq Cruz may have been in the last breakout group together. And so they had met each other and developed some rapport, maybe it talks some, but so I don't even really know what's going on, 
But my concern is, is that I want to participate with this other group. I don't want to offend anybody here. I want to invite you up here. I want to invite everybody. You know, I like it. If you have the time and interest and they're not against people just listening in, you know, you don't want to join the team, but you just want to know what's going on. I, I like the idea of having some, um, you know, some transparency, but uh, I don't know if that's, that's the, you know, desired intent of everyone else, but, you know. Sure. <laughs> let, let me, let me dive in real quick. Sure, please go uh, ahead. That's pretty much it. That's yeah, a mind that's thing. Well, that's great, man. And uh, so uh, I just want to say a few things, um, uh, like uh, just to try to like touch kind of the main points. Um, one is I think legally we have no problem being a part of multiple teams, but you want to run that by Gregory just because they're managing it. Uh, so I, and number two, I believe that people should be part of multiple teams because in, in my experience from even before Eden, uh, I've, I've had the button on, how are we going to emerge to be a part of multiple things? So I, I'm, I'm on that, I'm on that, I'm in that school that, that is looking for as a part of this larger prove out for Eden and for fractally is how do we overlap and maintain structure? So, uh, it's a great part of the test. And, um, number three is for you personally, I believe that this is great because, there is a lot of things that you can do that are that are way that, that are they're they're apples and oranges from what this team is is standing up and also there's a different pace associated with right right uh, with with tasking well there are many many different tasks and subtasks so what i think the interest the goal or the 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 point is is to try to like inherit whatever it is that's coming uh, out of this uh, effort and try to try to adapt. And so your move is, in my opinion, uh, something I think is an appropriate way to embrace what is the, what is the, really the identity of the larger organization. We're all trying to kind of grow this thing and remain very flexible and, and move into it as a way to, test it and to see if it ends up working um so this is a this is a great feature uh along the way and i'm happy to be a part of you coming to say a team and say hey guys i think i'd like to go to a second one and you know maybe there'll be a third one and and you'll have a, a connection with translation and one day maybe you won't uh, but i don't know how all that stuff will play out uh, also for her benefit I'd like to post the steps that I put together this weekend for uh, quickly setting up a Hive account, both on mobile and desktop. In oh, Layton. did you put that together? I did. Awesome, awesome. She could use My it, friend. as I told her, you know what, set it up before you go to the meeting. Don't wait if, if you're gonna go. I don't even think she's gonna go to an official Fractally, honestly, because I don't know, we'll see. But the team meeting for the Fractally in Orbit, I think she's going to, because I, you know, it's a one-time thing just to get an initial dialogue. Uh, I'm real familiar with this idea because I had a friend of mine show interest uh, recently that I announced at this past Saturday, as you remember, probably. And yeah, he I, got in the same room than me. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, Chris? Uh, yeah. yeah. So the last thing I was going to say to Chris is that there's any kind of friction or boundary or need, especially when it comes to the difficulty of a hive setup. So when I think about bringing people to this all i really want to do is say hey go in there and for a early introduction and i definitely don't want to say here stack up a bunch of private keys right. so so afterwards he said he did have interest in hive on a social level and maybe that flow flowed into his interest in fractally after all i know he was interested in fractally well this lady seems like she may be also and i think we have an alpha version even the pre-alpha version that she may find inspiring that quote works. Cause I believe you were referring to fractally when she said she doesn't want to start something unless it works. Well, it kind of already works in my opinion, at least to be interesting to even someone like her, but uh, she does not have to have a hive account and vote because when I asked Josh Seymour, he waffled. Really? I asked him a yes or no question. Yeah. I was wondering what happened with that. Cause I, I remember uh, that came up. Um, I asked so, him. Yeah. Question. I asked a simple question and simple questions are hard to answer, especially in public and springing it on him. Right. But I did, say, 
I did say it, it we're, we're using strong words when we say we have to this or have to that. And then on the back end, we say, if we don't, we can't vote. So my whole mode was, Chris, go in there. Don't worry about voting or hive. And right. my answer from Josh was tacitly, he can go in there. After all, he did go in there. And uh, he is interested in voting. I told him we have to like Wednesday, maybe even to the end of the week. Who knows when I reach out to Gregory, if Chris Harker puts a hive together and decides to put in his consensus, I will reach out to Gregory and say, hey, for the week of the, the sixth, eighth, seventh of uh, blah, 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 re request, let me know, standing by, I can help tie it in. If it's too late, that's okay too. Uh, by the way, they have three out of four consensus or whatever. I don't think they did at the time that I checked, by the way. So anyway, uh, I want to paste those steps somewhere. Doug, where would you like them? I'd be glad to put them anywhere. Um, I am building uh, two sites right now. One's called eosindex.org and the other one's EOS Open Stage. They're still under development, but I realize I'm thinking, man, I just start, I should start getting this stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm thinking, man, I shouldn't try to make it all nice and polished if it's half-assed, as long as the information's there, it, it'll get better over time. Because right I, now, I, I feel like there's- and, uh, I'd recommend try, try to polish it in real time to the 90, 95%, but, but not taking an extra twice the amount of time to finish right. it well, I, I'm, I'm still at the point where I'm just dealing with a lot of the basic infrastructure stuff. I just need to get the skeleton up and um, some, just some basic info and some other technical things. But the thing I'm finding is I'm tra traversing so much valuable information. I can't keep up with cataloging it. Like I need, I, if I start, if every time I, I came across stuff, I could just publish it to web, that would be ideal, but I'm not doing that because I, I have a little hurdle that I need to get past. But um, right now uh, I could, you know, where, how are, is it in a document? Just send it to me. So show me what you have. I can reformat and figure it, find a way to put it somewhere. Sure, man. I, I went ahead and put it in both Fractally groups and also our own EOS Translation Foundation group. So okay. it, it's there. It's not documented. It's just, it's an internal uh, approach that I proved out and I created my Earthman Mark Hive. And then I passed it on to my friend to say, get through this point. And if you got questions, hit me up. Did you use, how did you, because you know, there's more than one way to create a Hive account. And I used Essency with email sign up. I did the did same that. too. You did yeah, the same, I did the same thing when I, when I opened it. Okay. But that was a long time ago. So I don't know now. I don't know about now. I got, I got messed also, up I'm, though. Go ahead. I'm, I'm thinking you're, you're building a lot of, uh, a lot of things in a lot of places. And I, reg, I, reg, it's not that I regret, but it's a shame that you didn't get on time for, for, for net ink i don't know if, if mark do you remember what eos rapid did for for searching the web pages on on the blockchain uh no in fact i know we have a very difficult thing with that the only thing i've ever wanted is my taxes to be done and <laughs> uh, so i go to blocks and uh i go search uh a token a transfer and they handle all of my extraneous coins as needed and uh, that's the only search tool I've ever really used. Uh, what is this thing you're talking about, Oscar? See, there was a, one of the block producers, they, they're called EOS Rapid. They, they developed a protocol for storage the, the websites on your EOS account. It would go directly to your RAM account and it would be there. It's, you would only pay once because it would only pay for the, for the, uh, the resources that the transaction would would carry and that was it oh, the, rapid surf yeah thank you patrick what was it rapid surf it was net dot ink oh. we, we had something to do with with surf that surf was net dot ink okay See that comes up. There was a video. There was a Vimeo video. I'm gonna to try to find it and send it back to you because it was very interesting. The things that uh, it, it was very difficult to make it work, but you're building a lot of things, so you might you might want to take a look at it. Oh yeah, it's still around. 
Okay, because you know what? I, I was trying to figure out IPFS hosting. It was a pain in the butt, and I couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, it was. It was not, but it's very, it's very worth it. So this this it's looks different, it. though. This looks. Oh yeah, this is interesting. I mean, okay. it's kind of it's kind of like that because your storage in the website on your EOS account it is on the blockchain. So right, right. It's kind of like the same. Uh, I mean, in the manner that it's like an IPFS. Well, you know, the thing is, is I don't mind storing stuff on the blockchain, but I'm less concerned about that than information getting out. And one of the things I realized uh, with the EOS community is there's certain kinds of fixations on like a lot of things, you know, like say to the blockchain and, you know, this whole Web3 thing, but then they sort of lose grasp of how normal SEO works and how things are found. And I was just thinking about this, the whole way, the whole methodology of tweeting and what I was going back with some of the videos with the EOSBs. I was thinking to myself, I don't know if this is the best way uh, that we're going about this, because what I'm finding is even if you can get a, a tweet or something and you get someone to generate an EOS account or you get someone's interest, I think we're, we're, we're the thing, what we're missing is what the information brings them from when we got the hook in their mouth all the way into the fold and all the questions that come around and what is this about and how do I get involved? Mm. And, and so now, cause see the thing was, was for me, there was no need for a hook because I was already interested. Like you, you want more like you need something to keep me away from asking so many questions and getting involved yeah. in the community. <laughs> but uh, from my perspective, yeah, so, really? there were so many, so many points along the way where I kept asking myself, who in their right mind would want to get involved with this? Because this is so chaotic, so confusing, so hard to find the answers that I want, but they're all out there. I just can't find them on Google. I can't find them on DuckDuckGo. I have to go into these Telegram groups and ask people or dig around on uh, Patrick's MindWeb maps and all this stuff. And I'm like, you don't want to bring uh, people new to blockchain into this. You know, you need to make an index of information. The whole, the whole, like I actually spent some time going around to like, uh, some other communities, EOS sister chains, Telos, Wax, you know. Uh, uh, wax. Get, it, some, it was so getting, difficult uh, to me at the beginning to only just to make a Wax account. It was difficult because the, you know, the WCW uh, wallet, the, the web wallet they have, they can, you can create accounts on, with, only with your, with your email. That, that's amazing. But the page is blocked in my country. So it was so difficult to me to find out a simple way to make a wax account it was so confusing and i'm i'm, I'm, I'm not totally even right I get, I get what you're saying because it's very difficult to find to find information uh on, on the blockchain it's, it's like you have to be part of a cult everywhere yeah <laughs> you have to be part of a cult where all the to, information you, you want to is inside you have to dig around for the information because <laughs> sometimes for example the the east costa rica team they have a lot of guys and they are they're they're very useful and they are amazing but you need to know that they exist in the first place in order to get there. Because otherwise you just don't know. And the only way is going to the group and maybe asking someone, maybe you find a link and you keep going down the rabbit hole and maybe at some point you find it. Yeah, so like I, I got in some other Telegram and Discord groups and I found the kind of welcoming was, it was first off, there was a lot less noise. Um, there's no, there was no apparent bots and spam flooding channels. People were personable to me and answered questions or whatever. And it was just like a completely different experience. And I'm like, why is this seem to be plaguing the EOS community? <laughs> and, and one of the things I was thinking about is when I first got involved with EOS, I had no idea that so much of the develop, the develop developer, I don't know, people that are in the coding world, use uh, Telegram and Discord for organizing. But when I saw like the number and volume of variety of people coming into one Telegram channel and their learning levels or understanding are at all different levels, the concerns and interests they have are at all different levels. And whether they're actually a real person or a fake account, a bad actor or not, are all different levels. It's the kind of thing to where having any kind of engagement with the community in some sort of sensible way, it's very chaotic. And, it, and I think there was a, a, a thing just even recently in the Pomelo Playground Telegram group um, 
where there was, I think Douglas Butner even put up a poll about what you would like to see Eden doing. And I chose leadership because I feel like- uh, ah, That's been a matter of discussion for so long. But the thing is that- <laughs> How do you the, have leadership with three month electric CDs though? That makes no sense to me. See, when it comes to, to, to Telegram, the thing is that, I, or what I believe is that since most of crypto communities are already on Telegram. It is very difficult to get them out of there. It's just too difficult. And the, the ENF already did a great, a great work by taking a lot of people there. But it, it was so difficult that at the beginning, they, there was just so much resistance. And there have been attempts to move people somewhere, some, some other place like Slack. We used Slack for, for a while and it did not stick out. And uh, we all, I think we also did with an, with another one, which I don't even remember right now, but people just refuse to, to go somewhere else. I think it, ha it has a lot to do with the, with the crypto space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. And see, I get that now. Um, so anyways, uh, this, this meeting, I think, okay, so this Fractally in Orbit group, just so you know, the meeting they're having is Saturday, I believe, if uh, any of you have interest. Um, I think Patrick might have interest. But if I'm understanding correctly, um, on a private Telegram group, can you only add members? And in a public, you can invite? Do you understand how that works exactly? Because in some cases, I can't, like, I want to just copy a link and share it. But I don't. Right, and that depends on the permissions. That depends on the permissions that the owner set on the group. Right. Right. There's a couple of depend but, uh, options. Uh, yeah, for public group, you, for public like groups, you can just add an ad. Mm. Well, because I, I I like being able to share links to groups and not necessarily just like push somebody into it. You know, add them without even telling them or them choosing or other people. Yeah, but no, uh, it's. That's a reason that could potentially get you banned in some places. Well, I mean, te te um, technically, I from a from a principal standpoint, from a web marketing standpoint, that's like no different than spamming or unsolicited mail, adding someone to an email list that they never <laughs> subscribe to. You know? Yeah, more or less. But the thing, for example, with Telegram, is it's very good that for groups you can just add for public groups. You can just add them like it's a username. And that's the same as, as putting the link. But no, it's not the same as putting the link because when they put the link, the person gets to choose. You can see the join. preview. They, you they, can see they, the preview. But what but I'm just saying you, is that they, they choose to join the group. You know what I'm saying? They hit join group where they're, it's a voluntary choice versus me just adding them. There's... Yeah, of course. But I mean, instead of sending the link, the, the t.me slash in the name of the group, you can just add and put the name of the group and then it's like, like adding a username. So people just can click on that and see the group. Yeah, but what the problem is I can't find the username for the group because that's what I was trying to, that's what I was confused by. Let me see, let me go uh, back. For public groups, you can do that. For private groups, you can't. See, that's what it is. See, that's what I thought. So it is a private group. Most likely, yeah. Okay. But, well, uh, I'll have to... Going all the way back to what you were saying in the beginning, uh, I think that in order for you to be part of a second team, you, you can, but not within the same fractal. And I'm not exa I'm not completely sure what that means, but that that's what they say that you can be a part of more than one team, but you but not within the same fractal. And um, I, I'm not I don't see a reason why you can't why you why you shouldn't do that because um, personally for me I. I think it's great that, that you have more than one than one objective, than one purpose in, in life. So you just go go ahead and do all you want. Um, and as an organization, I think that the only ones that can that, that can at this moment that can tell you that you can or cannot do something within fractal is them. But I think I think it's totally fine. Well, uh, Joshua Seymour is running the meeting, and I put my name in the group. Uh, as my email address to be invited, so I am invited and going, and he will be recording the meeting. All right. So yeah, if Joshua has got, as, you know, I, I think I remember. I think I remember what Oscar was saying. Uh, I think I remember <laughs> what they were saying in the meeting. Uh, the way Oscar's recharacterizing it now that he says it, um, I, I believe 
even Larimer was the one that defined it. Uh, it's okay to be a part of two teams as long as they're not in the same uh, fractal. But watch out even for that word fractal because there's the fractally fractal. And I think right now we're all a part mm -hmm. of the fractal. fractal. So we have a team within the fractally fractal. Now, is that team better suited for another fractal if there's an EOS fractal or an EOS IO fractal? Maybe. Maybe we can convert the team over there when another fractal pops that's very EOS or EOS IO specific. Okay. But right now, the only game in town is the fractally fractal. That exactly. Have... That's the only fractal we have at, at this moment. But uh, again, this is all because uh, I get what the what the lady was saying. The 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 lady that you invited dog was saying because um, it's not like it's not working, right? It is working, but it is at a very early stage. So there are a lot of things that we still are yet to understand and discover because a lot of things just don't seem exactly right to me at this moment and and the other dog was had a rant not not too long ago i know where, where it comes from because we were in this in in the same room we went when one of the uh, the fractal members team members and we we're like all right but you can't share any detail and you can't prove any of the of the contributions you're doing and you still want to be up in the ranking so uh and that is way too difficult to do and uh things details like that that we're gonna have to be working on as we go so as of right yeah. now it is very difficult to say oh well, this is perfect it's not right but and it's now working and it's improving agree and we're presented with every micro challenge is an exciting one and one is I believe that Doug, you're bound to a 20 week, which is about five months uh, latency time between a choice. If you want to move over to that team, uh, start the ticker. Now, in the meantime, I think everything you do for that team is gonna be for both teams because right now we're- a to, to me, it won't, the thing I look at it, it's just a formality that I could care less about. I'm gonna do whatever I do, spend my time, do whatever I'm doing. They want my help and I can't help them. I'm gonna help them. If on paper I'm on the team or not, I really don't care. But the fact is, is that I want more clarity over how the structure is supposed to be. So if the structure is the best, great, but, or if, if it's not and it should be modified, then, you know, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't even know what the rules of the game are. And I just want to make sure that everyone knew like, I'm not trying to like do anything to break the rules or, you know, a leave sure. or whatever, you know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that, uh, that the, uh, it's all forward progress. So, uh, you know, if, if there is a rule that emerges, and you play inside of the field of those rules, um, then uh, if, if, if one of those items is the 20, 20th, 20 week latency, then make a decision, like think it through and decide if you want to make a move, make it as early as possible, just to get it in the hopper and see how that-, how that. We don't know what that move is either, by the way, because all right, we know that if someone wants to change, uh, but how, how do you notify that? Do you talk to Joshua or? Well, you talk to Greg Wexler because right now I have at hop two for my hive name, even though it's temporary, I put in the hopper. Gregory, I would like to transpose all of my identity from the Octu to the Earthman Mark hive wallet that I created this weekend, please, if possible. If it is possible, I'd love to work with you to make sure it's done correctly. And he may okay. say, he may say, I don't care. Well, it's the same kind of titular stuff that you're talking about, Doug. It doesn't mean anything to me either. I'm interested though in those, how those mechanics are gonna scale in the long run though. Even the 20 week, two teams, one fractally, community, what's the difference between a fractal? And anyway, it's just, I, I'm cool with, I, I'm, I'm interested in the, in the titles. Uh, and, uh, and then the work, I'm also interested in how they overlap. So my thing is you're gonna be funding I think I think you're going to be funding the Translation Foundation and you're going to be supporting the Translation Foundation, even if you're studying SATCOM. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. 
I mean, if I can provide value or role, absolutely I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, I'm happy to that, that's a key to this system that's supposed to be just so full of value that we want to flow as people and see what happens. So I love, and, I love that you. you, you and you, and you, the thing, here's the thing I'm thinking, if for some no. reason I'm limited in my respect earning because of the structure, but I'm still doing it and I'm undervalued, I don't really care, but then that needs to be sort of addressed with the system. You know what I'm saying? What were you I don't see a reason why you just can't be. A, I I don't re see any any reason why you can just be a, a a collaborator within this or the other team. So you you just like you say in paper are just part of one team, but you also work with the other. I mean, I see no. Right. Well, and, uh, but I do have a concern. Okay. If you happen to leave this one team, we're left with three members. Yeah. Does see, that was yeah right. Be solved or what happens? Oh. Oh, no, it will not dissolve. Um, it, you know, what, what will happen is I will work to create a fourth member if um, we get pushback that would say, according to the rules, if you don't get a fourth member, it will, it will dissolve. But I will, I will not, like, we'll have, we'll have plenty of flexibility to maintain the, uh, the team. Yeah, that was the other big deal. Like, you know, what right. the thing was, I, I would be—I wasn't even really worried about that because, as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't even planning on leaving this team. <laughs> I'm just going to be hanging out with other people now and then. <laughs> hey, and that's no, the way but, I'm I mean, beginning. I'm just curious, and I want to know what, what will happen. Oh, me too. Yeah, what'll happen is I'll get on the manual chats with the administrators and say, "Hey, we've got some good, interesting new." functions we want to we want to speak to them very purely and we'll uh sew our fabric across that gap all we'll be in the middle of is like we were two weeks ago when we were getting it all together it's the same thing it's just very manual right now and when right, they right. when they launch the chain it won't be like that uh, right. you know there'll be hard rules but it's it's good to have these things come up in the manual time so they can create the contingencies of understanding how to deal with it in the future when it's Thank you. So, so you are basically hemorrhaging with value in, in just this, this one facet uh, where we want to help them keep building their system based on all of the data that keeps popping up. One of them would be, uh, hey, you know, yeah, we, we want to, okay, um, we got to think about this, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, and my main concern is, is that like, with this sort of like, uh, I don't know. I guess there's some concerns of community members like Douglas Butner who feel as though there's a lack of transparency over what the Frackley team is actually doing or building and, you know, that it's not like we're basically ranking them highest largely, yet we don't see what exactly they're building or don't have a clear idea of the final product or know even exactly things like how much are they getting paid? How many hours a day did you work? What did you yeah. do this last week? We asked it to this weekend. Uh, it was asked uh, by uh, someone in our group to Brandon Fancher, who is a great guy and one of the 12 hires by Dan Larimer. And Brandon said, well, when asked, do you have a list of specific items you're working on? And he said, I will very soon. And that sounded like two weeks to four weeks. And Dan Larimer said four weeks, one month, they will have a published well, what it's going to be is a UI to be able to keep record and, and clock all of the micro items that you execute through that week. I guarantee it. It's going to be a thing like we were just talking about with all those web stores of places to publish things like on Hive or I right. published. Yeah, and, and there's some video conferencing component I'm ashamed to that replaces the Zoom function. Maybe we'll see that. That'd be great. I, I know that uh, Brandon, the, like they are working for, for that. They're working in that because uh, uh that's one of the things that Douglas mentioned that they're working on on something very similar to what, what they had on Clarion. I believe it. And look, I, I think it's what he said. I mean, no, who said it? I don't remember who said it, but soon might stop working at some point. So it's good to have a, an alternative. It's good to have our own thing if we're gonna do if we're gonna go uh, and say, all right, we're good, we're right. doing this decentralizing, we're doing <laughs> This apart from from every other, uh, um, in order to be independent, is what I want to say. Yeah. So let me let me bring out a small point I noticed here because I realized this is a small little thing that I don't know if everyone else sees. 
I don't mind that Frackley is working on a video conferencing solution. I think I think it is a ne- I mean a needed thing. You know, I don't want to be like I'm mm. I'm here and I'm going. Why are we? Why I'm here looking for Web three and what I see is Web two patched together like Zoom and Discord and Telegram and all these different things and you know hodgepodge. And so I'm looking for this new UI. Well, the thing I found uh, concerning about it is Douglas Butner. Um, and his interpretation of the fractally white paper felt as though his contributions were more highly valued than uh, I think. Who, who was it? Uh, basically, one of the other John. team members. John. John. Yeah. And this whole talk about the video conferencing solution, he's like, oh, well, it's not in the white paper. So they're working, they're building something that's not in the white paper that I only found yeah, out by necessary. asking the other people. But then what, what it came out was, it, there was possibly some mention in the white paper. I don't know. And there has been some historical talk about this, but it's not in the white paper. And Douglas, regardless of what's happened, interprets this as this team is not trustworthy. This team is hiding things from us. They're not working according to the, the game plan that they've set. And because of that violation of their own standards, I am not like I don't have the kind of, that kind of ethic to participate with these kinds of people. Now, that kind of thinking is very damaging and him being so vocal about it is very damaging. And it may be, be based on real things, but it may also not be based on real things. It could just be based exactly. on simple misunderstanding. Exactly. But no one's I mean, taking know, the time to answer these questions and resolve them. Wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying he's completely flat out wrong, but a lot of things you're saying is just taking them too, way too far. Because we are going to need a video conferencing tool at some point. That doesn't mean they're not working on the voting system, which I, I believe is the most important part of, of the whole thing. The, the, the whole voting part system and the respect distribution, the token, whatever. I think that's important too. And I bet they're working on that too. But that doesn't mean they're not, they can't work on other things at the same time. That's a, the same what we're telling you right now. You can be part of this team and you can be working right. with some other people at the same time. It doesn't mean that you can only do one thing only. Right. Patrick's got his hand up. Yeah, yeah before, and Patrick, we'll go two seconds to you. Uh, before we do that, uh, I want to say on these two notes, um, yes, we want to nur- nurture, okay? So if we go off the reservation and we start shooting holes in what these guys are trying to build, then you kind of shoot the heart out of the artist. So sure, if you want to, that's fine. But as far as I'm concerned, I can tell you, I, my interpretation is whoever's doing that is, 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 uh, uh, is basically wanting to get right for themselves and is trying to work this out. And they're just loud. Now, what I'll do is I'll run and I'll say, I think there's virtue. And I would move to uh, a, a way to... Uh, use the noise as a way to harden the, the what the group is trying to learn from and, and keep growing uh you know you want that you don't want to take the legs out of fractally because you know you oopsied you know you just want to like get <laughs> well, in the comp the big so, problem is though is i think that these kinds of things that are happening are just being brushed under the carpet you know and not addressed because what really i think should happen with good. someone someone is high visit Someone like Douglas Butner, do you know how much respect he's earned up until now? He's pretty high ranked, okay? He's a developer. He has some degree of success in a knowledge. To have him come out with something so vitriolic sounding, okay, is not good for Fractally or the EOS community by and large. And to not let those, maybe there's some mixture in there of truth and falsity, but to leave it as an unresolved thing where everyone just thinks their own thing is creating part of that confusion. You get what I'm saying to where I, I really feel as though it would be worth the time to go back and nitpick through all these things and, and discuss it in detail. Like where does it say or not say in the white paper? And if it doesn't, you know, give, you know, the whole notion of why we're doing it. Well, maybe, maybe someone should give an apology for forgetting to put it in the white paper. But get over it, Douglas. Like this, you know what I'm saying? It's sort of like yeah, but I mean, it's difficult because he's part of a community that has seen Dan and he has seen a, a, a group of developers go to something and not finish it. It's what Patrick said. 
it's right. a, they did it's clarion all, all over again it's they did it and then went all the way to clarion then they didn't finish clarion and go all the way to to fractally are they going to finish fractally because the there is also the concern that all right they're asking for funding and if what happens if they don't give it to you are you going to delay the 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 launch of the product until you get some money or what are you going to do so a lot of people are, are having that that sentiment that, and that is natural it's normal so i'm not saying that that it's it's just as easy to tell them right calm down we're just gonna solve this easily yeah thanks, it should be so easily just by talking but a lot of people have have are carrying this baggage like you said and it's just it's just not easy to see things to come in the in the same in the same way that they did before and not say uh, mm -hmm, I've seen this before. I kind of feel like this happened before. I can I kind of see feel like I've watched this movie before. <laughs> yeah, you know and it's funny Oscar that you say that cuz it doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> well, uh just something to keep in mind is it's not the same. It's evolving. EOS Steemit Hive broke off of Steemit that's a huge success. Uh, the bit shares is still functioning. You got the arguments. I, I knew about bit shares, bit shares before I even knew that it was a product from from Dale Larimer. Yeah, there's there's it's easy to get off center when this is this is basically a prototype. It's broken. It's totally broken. It's it's in pieces. It's coming together. It's ruined. It's, it's, it's at an early stage. I, I said it. We're we're still discovering it. We're still uh, exploring. <laughs> Yeah, a book was written on it a month, a year ago, and here we are standing these things up in, in swift time. So, yeah, take very tender, loving care of this fledgling uh, group if if we want to be uh, still engaging. But if we lose interest for other reasons, then then definitely uh, feel free to uh, to be your own good critic and say, I don't think it's going to go anywhere and, and, and then move on or stay with it and, and play with it. It, 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 it while it goes away and hey, prove you. I, I I don't think plans going anywhere, buddy. You could. I don't, think, I don't think it's going nah, anywhere. I, 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 I've hold so many tokens all the way down to zero because I don't leave things in the middle. I don't leave stuff halfway through. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. No. I'm I'm here hey. for the I'm here for the long haul. I'm riding out this train for roller yeah, coaster, okay. whatever it is. <laughs> you're in it, if you're still here, you're in it for the tech, as Patrick is. So hey guys, so this was great. Thank you. Uh, we I think we got everything and enough oh. out but, but let's hand it over to patrick yeah i want to hear patrick wants to yeah say. And, and, and let's just say good meeting thank you so much doug that was wonderful to hear you just come out and just say all this good stuff uh we'll all think about it and, and make good th thoughts uh so without further ado uh patrick you're welcome to join with video if you like also or just audio i'll leave that to you you gotta unmute him someone does so I've asked him to unmute. Okay, perfect. Okay. Hey. Okay. Do you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. So first, uh, thank you for this uh, nice talk. I, I have uh, put some uh, comment into the Zoom chat during that you spoke. And uh, yeah, nice, uh, nice talk, uh, Oscar, uh, Doug, and Mark, and. I just want to maybe come back on some points. First about to do your website without any, uh, let's say without any infrastructure, just put on the blockchain your website. There was this DAPSurf uh, developed by this team, uh, uh, DAPSurf. And um, that's depre deprecated this code they have give their code to the prospector team and the prospector team is the team that is doing the application with Maurice Vanegas of EOS Marketplace, EOS Microloan. They have developed a nice website, Named, eostemplate1.com where you can create your website without any knowledge, without any uh, infrastructure, hardware infrastructure that use your EOS account. And you you go there, you go there. I have a question. Um, are, 
did Maurice Venegas res yeah. restrict the access from the Venezuelan people? Uh, I do special LATAM every month with Maurice. So uh, I will not unveil here all what I cannot unveil. But what I can say, and Oscar also, you know, a lot of things. I know that Oscar uh, knows a lot of things about Venezuela, but myself, I know the situation with Colombia. And Colombia is an neighborhood of, uh, a neighbor of uh, Venezuela. There, it's very difficult uh, because all is uh, controlled, all what you are doing. Uh, is taken by the government and that's very difficult to do something with the blockchain. The intent of Maurice Vanegas is a nice guy, he's a Colombian guy, 25 years in uh, LA and he want to do the good for the people and empowering the people. So the intent is good. But now the situation in Venezuela, that's another point, there, there were some people in jail and uh, some people were uh, uh, I, uh, leave the jail, that was okay. And Maurice has injected a lot of money to, 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 to take that, to, 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 to help them. So the situation with Venezuela, it's a little uh, beside now. And now he's focused with Nigeria and, and Uganda. But about the tech, about the tech, there is three tools. There is the EOS template one.com to create your website without any knowledge. There is a second tool, NAMED EOS Microloan. It's to have your, uh, uh, it's to have a loan backed by, backed by. Um, What's it called? EOSMicroLoan.com. Okay. But you have to go into the special LATAM mind map. Oh. Nice idea. I will uh, give you a link on that. Um, of of mindweb.io on the special LATAM. I will give you that into the chat. Special LATAM. I, I will give you that into the chat and you can go after. So, this mind map is the seven episodes of, since October last year that I have begun with Maurice Vanegas. So if you go into this mind map, you have the Jekyll Island documentary of Bill, uh, the, the famous Bill, but uh, Maurice Vanegas has made the documentary Named, the true behind the three federal reserve. And he knows Bill, uh, this famous guy of 1996. That's nothing scary. Maurice is a correct guy. I had, and some, I had some good dialogue with him on YouTube. <laughs> And I, when I do my special LATAM number eight, I will ask I, I will ask him to say that publicly in order that some bad tongues are uh, stopping because you are a lot of people speaking without knowing. And that's dangerous, um, without reason, without reason sometimes. So for the history, technically, there is this DAP surf that was supposed to be to create your website, but that was on the jungle testnet. And then the prospector team of uh, with Vu Maurice Vanegas is uh, collaborating. I take this code to 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 put that into eostemplateone.com. So that's very the 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 the, histori the story of uh, Maurice Vanegas, totally independent, not depending of Eden, not depending of Fractali, just working with EOS. And what I want to say here, it's we have EOS. At the base layer, we have EOS, the mainnet. And we have had Eden on EOS. Now we have this fractally. We have those brainstorming session on the Monday with Jesse because we, we have signed that uh, fractally will be built on EOS. And uh, there is uh, also EOS Nation implicated into that with Denis Carrier, the CTO of EOS Nation. Amy Hines also reviewing the proposal and the proposal of Jesse Jaffe, the last episode, Marshir, he has made a remark into the proposal. We have taken that in, into account. Gregory Wexler, also of the Fractali team, that's mean a lot, has made a proposal to, to name it that three genesis fractal and no more three prime fractal because that's make think 
that there is a more important uh, English, Korean, and Chinese than the other. And we want to be multi-language multi multi to solve the barrier issue. So that goes very well. So for me now, this fractally and hidden, that's just artifact that have been added by Daniel Larimer himself in order that the people are incentivized to collaborate between them, between them. So you have some people that's not into their blood to collaborate with someone else. And you have other people that's naturally that they collaborate with others. But I think when I was interviewing Dan on January 23rd, he was stating communication platform, peer-to-peer, -peer, Clarion, maximally decentralized communication platform on, of the former Clarion team. He said, this communication platform is not the priority. The priority is to develop Mandel. Then come fractally with the white paper. And it is not mentioned at any line that they will develop a communication platform. They will develop a decentralized exchange and other part of this platform. But the communication platform, peer-to-peer, -peer, he said, maybe later, I will develop that when I have time. So now, if some people are upset, like for example uh, Douglas Buckner, uh, and stating a lot of a lot of uh, uh, criticism, sometimes justified, sometimes very personal perception. Um, I agree on one thing: if you are stating something into a white paper, you have to develop what you said until the end and uh, deliver something and, and not during the road. Yeah, during the road, you have the right to go to the left, to the right, but you have to join the line again and reach the goal. And what I am afraid of personally, is to see the fractality team taking us like, uh, let's say, cobays, 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 cobay, cobay, uh, like a tester uh, to go into the meetings and when we are into the same room with, I was with Mark two times in the same room and with Brandon Fancher and Val, the, the developer of uh, Fractali. When we asked them, Mark, Mark was asking, a time he was asking, um, can we have something in a couple of months that would be great? And myself, I asked on the last one, can we have some links at least? They were the both with the mouth closed and that was like they don't know themselves maybe exactly where they are so that's not so good that uh, uh, we are showing respect we are going into this, this this meeting we are doing our best job we we are uh, showing transparency mark is showing transparency myself also I, I show the links where where i am this is not perfect but i show and then they are because they are into the fractality team. They have this capacity to say at the beginning of their talk, uh, I put myself six because I am of fractally and I am doing a fantastic job. Okay, but show something, show something. So that's my, my concern um, in the absolute because we have collaborative circles around EOS. We have EOSBs. EOSBs is doing reports. Every month is showing what they are doing. Where are going the funds? EOS support, a collaborative circle, fantastic. EOS marketplace with Maurice Vanegas is showing what he has, what he is doing. All is transparent. It's on the blockchain, and not only. He, he do a picture. He show all. Myself, I show also. So, why, why the founders of this EOS ecosystem, and Daniel Larimer himself, why they, they are not showing us, however, it is not finished, we know that this is not finished, but show the progress. Because if you wait until that they are all made, you will have maybe nothing. So you have not to wait on someone else to do something. You have to do yourself to be independent, autonomous, and have the best freedom. So you have hey, to develop. Let me interrupt. You, have to, you have to develop something, otherwise you wait on another team to do hey, something. Let, 
your point's well taken. And I'm going to stop the recording right now. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, that was a great, really. So I'm going to stop now.